and welcome back to Irish Football Fan TV. I'm here with Steve. We're going to go through all the Premier League games and all the big talking points from the Premier League this weekend. We we'll start off with uh, United and Spurs. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one uh, United. And Jose pointing to the camera afterwards, basically as if to say, "What? What? What crisis?" Yeah. Just saying, shut the fuck up. Yeah. Pretty much. Um, I think with. Uh, I, I suppose it's very vulnerable without Kane. That would yeah. be, be the thing I'd be yeah. <coughs> yeah, I think above anything you take away from that game, and there's loads of positives for United to take away from it from a defensive point of view because they just shut Spurs down. But from Spurs' perspective, they signed Lorente and suddenly Kane's out and he still doesn't Sons play. In, he still doesn't play Lorente. He takes Son off the left hand side where his son has been playing really well and he completely rejigs their team and how they play and it doesn't work. Um Is that a striker either like Son can but Son can play up front at yeah, but look at the Son will play team. wherever you want them to, but you know, he's not he's not Harry Kane. That's he's not that type of player. Lorente is more that type of player. Yeah. Lorente has less pace than Kane, but I do think Spurs really need to try and figure out what their plan B is without Harry Kane there because they seen they came up against a good team away from home without Kane and they just looked completely listless. They didn't ever look like they were really going to win the game. Yeah. And at times the annoyance, like, they've been going through a bad pass, not a bad way to, to, to end it. Yeah, and it comes from and Anthony Martial having an impact again. It's yeah. But as well as that, you look at they're playing like Spurs are one of their main threats if they're going for the lead there. So yeah. we were only talking last week about our City the main threat now. You know, it clearly answered that question for us. So. Yeah. What are we gonna say about um Martial? Yeah, I think Martial looks at times now for United this season like the player he was in the first season at United, where he's just he's so quick, he's so direct with the ball, he's a good finisher. Nice man. Yeah, he just he has something about him that you just always think, right, there's, even when he wasn't playing well last season, you were still watching him going, there's a bit of magic there, and at any moment he could just beat two players and pop one into the top corner. Yeah, he's a very clever player. Um, but you know it's home for him at this stage has to be talked about. It's 37 games in all competitions, unbeaten. That's a serious record. That's a Mourinho with Chelsea and Stamford yeah. Bridge type record. You know, that's... That's something United you know, can hang their hat on and if Mourinho can start to get results away from home against the bigger teams and obviously that'll come on Sunday against Chelsea. Um, whether he can go to Stamford Bridge and get a result, get a win. If they can go and get a win off the back of beating Spurs at home, maybe City slip up slightly against yeah. Arsenal. They don't pick up full points, get a draw, suddenly United are back to three points or whatever and they've just won at Stamford Bridge. Yeah. They're, they're right back in it at that stage. So... If Mourinho's plan's going to work... You see, see, you need to drop points, though. They just don't look don't like doing that at the moment. I wouldn't agree with that. I haven't watched them on Saturday. Yeah, but even if they're scoring so many more goals than anybody else, they just don't look like they drop the points. Yeah. But I think they will. I think there will be games where teams shut them down. I think when they go to Old Trafford, it will be the biggest test that they'll have all season. Yeah, but it'd be interesting. But that's still a while away. I don't think that's still December, is it? Yeah, November, December. Yeah. So, yeah, anyway, yeah, we'll move, we'll move on to the Ar Arsenal and Swansea. Yeah. Uh, Arsenal were one nil down. Showed a bit of fight for once. Yeah. That's how you feel. <laughs> um, yeah, they showed a bit of fight for once and actually came back from uh, a goal down. Lucas scored and then Kalasnach and Ramsey. I think you wanted to speak a little bit about your mate, Kalasnach. Yeah. Well, Kalasnach dragged them back into this game. You know, it, just, it says that even on... The score sheet, Kalasnach got the first one, the assist of the second one. He dragged them back into that game. And Kalasnach, you watched him at Schalke and even at the start of Arsenal. He's got a mentality to win games and to give everything and to push forward, to push on when things aren't working. And I think Arsenal have missed that massively. And yeah, it's coming from a left wing back, which probably isn't the most you know, traditional position for a player to push on. You'd want a central midfielder or even a central defender to really be pushing you on in that way, but Kalasnach gives Arsenal that, Kalasnach gives Arsenal an outball now. A little bit of an edge, yeah. Yeah, 
and look, he does look like he could get sent off at any moment for just being too strong. But they all do, all the Muslims. Yeah, <laughs> they're all mad. Um, but another one that Phil and uh, Phil's not here to defend it, so I can throw this out freely. Granite Jack has completed 129 passes in the final third so far this season. Ten games. That's a serious amount of passes for a player who should be playing more defensive. And he looked good in the second half as well for Arsenal. Yeah, I think maybe he just gets the wrong end of the stick. Uh, I, I don't see how he's so bad, but I don't watch Arsenal as closely as say Phil probably would. Yeah. But I, I don't know, I don't see the bashing of, I don't see the bashing of Xhaka. I think he's a very good passer the ball and I think he moves Arsenal quite well. Um, on a Swansea point of view, though. He's the, he's the James McCarthy of the Arsenal, maybe. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Let's not talk about James McCarthy yeah, yeah. in a minute. <laughs> um, but from a Swansea point of view, do you think that at this stage it looks pretty bleak? Because no matter how well they play in games, they still still seem to just leak goals. Um, I wouldn't say it looks pretty bleak. I still, I still, I still think they have the chance to stay up because West Ham. Um, Palace, Everton, Bournemouth. Uh, yeah, they are. They they don't really win the game at the moment either. Yeah. So I don't think it looks that bleak. I think they if they can start getting a couple of results now or next uh, next one. I think Paul Clemens is a decent enough manager. I just don't think he has the squad resources. Yeah. To um to combat what he's trying to do. Yeah, I think he wants to play attacking football. He wants to play possession yeah. football and everything like that. I think he's hindered by his back four, the back five of the weekend, that he doesn't have the passers in it to play from the back. Yeah, to play from the back. Alfie Mawson is a league two, like Humper. He's a good player though. He's a good defender. He's not a very good footballer. Yeah, he's a good. I meant by defender, he's a good defender, yeah. old fashioned. But yeah, see, I'm of the opinion. I think Swansea are weak. I think Swansea will end up right down there. Um. I don't think they have the level of players needed to... I think there's worse squads than them, I think. I think there's worse squads, but I don't think there's many worse defences. Yeah. I think defensively they look very weak. Colin Norton and Olsen on the wings. They're like a fullback. Yeah. Martin Olsen's made a career out of being relegated from the Premier League. So. Oh, fella. Blackburn, Norwich. Yeah. Anyone else? I think it's, it wasn't he a QPR? I think he might have been. Yeah, I think he was a QPR. So yeah, no, he, was, he was there. Swedish, yeah, yeah. Swedish yeah. international. <laughs> he's got a twin brother as well who plays left wing. Yeah. He's very he's, confused. He's just not blessed. God love yeah. him. Uh, yeah, but look, um, the thing I'd be asking is for, for, from an Arsenal point of view is what do they want from this season? Do you know what I mean? Do they, do they want to finish top four? Do they want to win the Europa League? Do they want to you know win the FA Cup and finish fifty or, or what? I think ideally. For Arsenal fans, best like best case scenario, if being realistic, um, is to finish fourth and win the Europa League. Yeah, I mean, the, you'd have to feel feel sitting here that or sitting here last week with the Holy Trinity and stuff like that. Like they have up front three world class players. Yeah, and then as much as you want to slag Xhaka or whatever, he's he's not he's not say he's world class, but he's not a bad player he's to a, have. In that he's field a very player. good player when you get him playing. Like that's. But You've got Kalasnach and Bellerin either side who are both good attacking players. Koscielny on his day yeah. is, is, is up there with the best. Look, Mertesacker is a World Cup winner with over 100 caps for Germany as well. He might be slow as anything but he's still a good defender. Yeah, he's organised. And Monreal's having a decent season as well. So the, there's players there and there's hope there for Arsenal but it's whether Arsenal can keep it together. It's the only thing about Arsenal is together. that you, in fairness to them, how often have they, have they been able to fill fill their best eleven? You know, yeah. As well as that, like you haven't, you've only seen Ozil, um, Lacazette and Sanchez on the pitch. Was it once last week? Yeah. Um, but what would worry me is they played all again this week, didn't they? And it was Klaas that actually dragged them out of it. It wasn't Ozil, Ozil, Sanchez, and Lacazette, which it should be. Yeah, um, and that's maybe them. that's maybe another one of questioning the mentality of Sanchez and Ozil and whether they really want to be there, and whether they're when it gets tough, whether they're actually really, really willing to fight for Arsenal anymore. When mm-hmm. things are going well, it's going well, but when it's not going well, are they gonna? Is Sanchez gonna do what he's done for the last couple of years at Arsenal and drag them through games? Yeah, well, let us know what you think, guys, Arsenal fans. 
to get in touch. Uh, we keep things in London there. Um, yes. Palace and West Ham, two all draw. Yeah. Um, it's like a battle of who can be worse. <laughs> well, I, I think I could say here, say here, with this top of me and say much. I think Palace um, <coughs> come out of it with a lot. Not very enthusiastic today, as you can probably tell. Palace come out with a lot of credit from this game, um, because they kept fighting. And they didn't play well, but they kept going, they kept going, they kept going, and Wilfred Zaha kept going. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, it came West Ham fans weren't really happy with him. Well, West Ham fans weren't very happy with him. No, they wouldn't, but I'm not going to pass comment as to why. West Ham fans would be unhappy with Wilfred Zaha. But Probably United you know, reject and everything like that. Yeah, it's not good enough to play for England, apparently, and then he bangs them into the back of the 97th minute. <laughs> It's just the West Ham way, really, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> that maybe that's the West Ham way. Maybe they give opposition players pelters for 90, 90 minutes and then they score the equaliser against them. Maybe yeah. that's it. Just utter disappointment and desolation. Or they're just so in shite. Uh, but I just yeah, the one thing from that game, uh, from a West Ham point of view, is that you'd really pull your hair out is Mikel Antonio in the last couple of minutes going going down into the corner. Has the ball down there, he's a strong boy. And he tries to cross it. Palace get the ball back. And Palace, West Ham don't touch it again before Palace score. It's just, it's nonsensical in the 96th minute to put a cross into the box when you're 2-0 in football. a relegation fight. <clears throat> you've just got to, you've got to keep it down there. Whether it's turning and playing a pass, you don't give away possession. And he gave away possession. And that's what cost West Ham a win. If he'd have kept the ball down there for 20 more seconds, even giving away a free kick then, at that stage, Palace are probably kicking the ball up the pitch. Uh, away from Antonio anyway, because he's probably got enough stick from people in the last couple of days. Um, with, pa- or with Palace, do you think they have enough to get out of it, or does too much rest on the so- shoulders as that? I think, from based on... The first five or six games, I think they were cruelly beaten by a lot of teams, and I just think that their confidence is completely shot. I don't think that. I think they'd be doing very well, very, yeah. very, like, very well to get out of the situation they're in. <clears throat> if that happens to Zaha, Townsend, that's their attack. I think it's Zaha. I think Townsend, you could lose, and Sako could come in. They've shown you can lose Mateke and Zaha will play through the middle. I think if they lose Zaha, the season's over. If he gets an injury yeah. for another six weeks, it's done. They can have all the rest of the players in their squad fit. The thing is that they don't like if you look around at the squad in terms of um, their attacking players, they don't have bad players. The like, Kaboy is, you know, a very good player and yeah. it wasn't that long ago he was, was in the you know, France team. Playing for PSG. Yeah. Like you know what I mean? He's a good player, absolutely, yeah. but at the same time, I think they do miss that attacking threat in midfield. I think a boy's a really good passer of the ball and everything like that, but he doesn't really drive it. Lost his cheeks, been sitting on the bench for him, but I don't know how up to the Premier League he really is. Uh, people were giving him a bit of praise at the start of the season, but you can give a fellow all the praise you want, but if he's playing the number 10 role and your team aren't scoring goals at all, you can't be doing that well. Yeah, that's true. But... Yeah, we'll move on from Palace. No, I don't know how long to talk about Chikorito on score sheet again, though. Yeah. Um, he's going to get you those. He's going to get you goals. Will me. Will Billich still be manager by the time West Ham next play? Yeah, I think they'll give him the weekend. Yeah, it depends. It's a funny one. It's the same thing with Kuhn getting sacked. Like no one thought it was going to happen, and bam, it just happens. It's, it, it seems to be the the way everyone comes out with the the. The vote of confidence, the dreaded vote of confidence, yeah. and then they're gone. Then a week later, I think he would have been gone had Spurs not, or had they not beaten Spurs in the league cup. Yeah, I think he'd have been gone if they lost Spurs during the week and then lost. Or had this happened with Palace with the draw, that would have been it. Yeah, but then you're gonna go look at it like Man Antonio hasn't crossed that ball and he gets three points. So Village is really to blame. Yeah, part of the blame still has to fall onto the players as well. Yeah, you know, absolutely. <clears throat> Yeah, I right, moving on with them. Stoke won Watford nil. Yeah. yeah. Darren Fletcher. It's a great goal. Great goal. It was a great player. Um corner from the right hand side for Stoke and 
Um, Watford were playing Zanley along the six yard line and Stoke had a cluster of players at the edge of the box. And what those cluster of players actually did was block the Watford players who were further out in the box from actually getting to the ball. I basically gave Fletcher a free shot goal from 18 yards out and Darren Fletcher isn't renowned for his goals but as Gary Neville said last night on Monday Night Football about it when they were talking about the goal Darren Fletcher scores, has scored good goals great goals and important goals he's got bottle when you give him that ball in that position he's always had it so he was the right player to have Scotland as well. yeah and you think about it as well if they put Jaron Shakiri at the edge of the box someone's going to mark him they put Darren Fletcher at the edge of the box no one's probably going to mark him. They're going to think, oh, he's just there to sweep up if the ball comes I've out. I've seen him score a volley against Everton once yeah. in Ob- Old Trafford. Darren Fletcher is a, cr- a great day. He's a criminally underrated player. Oh, yeah. He Especially with the illness and everything he yeah. had. He'd still be playing. I think he played every game for West Brom last season as well. Yeah. Every game. And look where they finished for yeah. West Brom. Eighth. It was a very good season for them. And he's... he's He's just such an important player for any team he goes He's to. Like. Be surprised why Pierce have let him go. Having doing that, but anyway, I think there was probably an evolution of play you that Pierce wanted player. in midfield at West Brom. You like Gary, 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 yeah, but Gary Barry's probably a better kind of passer of the ball than Fletcher and stuff like that. And they brought in Cricket Sheriak and they've yeah. got Livermore there and stuff like that. And maybe that's what he wanted, but who knows what Tony Pierce. Yeah, that's true. Watford is surprised was all considering how how well they've been going, and Marco Silva getting all the all the plaudits of late. I think the problem with Watford is they create a lot of chances. They're pretty solid defensively. They're good in midfield with Capua and Bakore. But in forward positions, they don't have that clinical finisher, and that's the worry. People have been giving Richarlison a lot of credit so far this season. But I think we're more seeing now why Richarlison wasn't that much talked about when he was in Brazil. Yeah. And that's because he is a good player, he's a creative player, he's a direct player, but he's not a good finisher. Yeah. He misses a lot of chances. And Watford have, lo- Watford have lost games in the last two weeks because Richarlison can't put the ball in the back of the net consistently. And they need to find another player. Richarlison can still be in the team, so he should be out of it because he's still playing well overall. But can they really rely on Troy Deeney to get those goals anymore? Is a time maybe that Andre Gray comes in and takes that spot? They signed him for a lot of money in the summer. He did score goals for Burnley last season. He's a direct player. He's quick. He gives them a bit in the air. He's Should aggressive. Spend that much money on him? Why are you playing him? That's what I'd be asking. I think this is Dean. He's their captain, and Dean he does give them a lot. Mm, and he scored against Arsenal. Yeah, and he tried to choke Joe Allen. That was, that was kind of funny. I don't think, the whole I don't think rivalry, no, the whole rivalry in Ireland and Wales of late as a start is kind of Yeah. I don't think it's a red card, though, either. People are saying, oh, it's a definite red card, you should be charged. I don't think it really is. It's just... He just grabbed his face. We've all played football. He's trying to make him look like a joker from Batman. Yeah. <laughs> we've all played football. That, yeah. That's... That happens. Handbags. Yeah, that happens. That's not in... That's not in serious. He's not trying to kill him, like... Let's be fair. Yeah. <sighs> I don't know. It's people are getting too people are getting Actually, too. Let us know what you think about Troy Dean. Yeah. Should it have been a red? Let us know in the comments. Yeah. Um Man City and uh, West Brom. Man City winning three two. Yeah. Not a lot of teams are gonna score two goals against City this season. Yeah, well the second goal was completely gifted to West Brom by Ottomandi, so yeah, he's just, um Although he's been good of late in fairness too. Yeah, the one thing I'd take from this is De Bruyne didn't have the greatest of games. Silva didn't have the greatest of games. And even with that, Fernandinho had a really effective game. And Leroy Sané continues to just be Amazing. a ridiculously good footballer. His first goal, or his goal, the first goal for City, is ludicrously good. That strike is as good as you'll see anywhere all week. It is just an absolute ping with the left foot into the top corner. If you look at that, like the team they have, Silva, Sané... Um, De Bruyne, Bernardo Silva, Jesus, Aguero. Even Sterling, in fairness, has been banging them in. Sterling's well. gone the one. Fernandinho. Yaya Torre is in the Yaya Torre. There's a ridiculous oh, amount of players at that club who just can affect the games and change yeah, games. Uh, their squad's amazing. That's why I just can't see. They pretty much have a, a good player for every position, except for maybe left back. Like They don't have a back up there. I know they have Mendy, but they don't. Yeah. Delph is doing really well there. 
Well, he just he doesn't play there. You know, it's not his actual position. I think the natural backup was actually Danilo. Yeah, but he's a right back. Yeah, but Danilo can play both sides. He's always been able to play both sides. Yeah. Just like Paul. Sits on the bench every week. Hey! (laughs) (laughs) I was asking for that one. Yeah, kind of to watch it at the weekend. He didn't even get on, Paul. Local derby, you know? Yeah. Oh, well. It's always next week. Um, But, yeah, I just... Danilo was probably the player who, when Guardiola envisaged his side, it was Walker was one side, Mendy was the other, and Danilo would cover both sides. And now he can't have that because he kind of needs Danilo to cover Walker's minutes and he has to find another left back. And he found that in Fabian Delph, yeah. who looks a good player, looks a little bit like the player he was at Villa, where he does have a very good left foot, he is a good passer of the ball, he can defend. So, I don't... Look, Pep Guardiola made a player out of Adriano. The little Brazilian yeah, fullback Adriano for years and years. He'll do this with players... Rafinha just be, for Bayern. Yeah. Rafinha, just, oh, we'll just play him anyway. Yeah. He's already as well. Yeah, exactly. He will make functional players into important members of his squad. Yeah. Utility players. Yeah. From a West Brom point of view, though, two goals against City, that's... A little bit more of a positive for a team who doesn't really score a lot of goals. Yeah, and they usually, when they go to teams like City, they usually just fold anyway, and they're just like, all right, well, we know we're not going to beat these, so we'll save ourselves for next week yeah. against Crystal Palace, say. Yeah. For argument's sake. And they'll go there to City normally and let City do what they want, and then with the hope maybe getting a win, but yeah. realistically knowing that they're not going to, and they're going to, like, Specialised for the week after and get a result at say Palace or whoever, they're yeah. just below them. Even says like even someone like Southampton, they yeah. put all their rest all their laurels on that. You know, yeah. the thing I want to talk about and I don't know if you do, but is the fact that McLean continuously gets booed for the stupid poppy thing. Now I see an image at the weekend. Daniel Sturridge d- didn't wear a poppy. Yeah, why isn't he getting abused? Because he's English. Do you know what I mean? He had, he's came out and said it and stated it many times. The reason t- as to why he is not going to wear a poppy and he will never wear a poppy. And, you know, and most Irish people, I'd say all of them, uh, would stand by his decision. Yeah, like, stand by, like look. I Especially last, where he's from. I watched, Bur- watched Burnley play last night and Hendrick and Brady both had poppies on. And um, Ward as well. Fine. If that's, if, if you don't have an opinion on it, um, on the poppy, fine. Wear it if you don't. I pair, think it's more so that's okay. He's from the north, though. You know what I mean. But, and he had yeah, the troubles. We're in Derry as yeah. well. So. Obviously, James is from Derry and a part of Derry that is synonymous with the troubles and what went on there. And if Ireland had something that commemorated. You know, it's such a public way. Obviously, we do have things to commemorate yeah. um, our soldiers and everything like that. But in such a public way, as the poppy, and there was English players over here playing the League of Ireland or pl- playing whatever, or England were over here playing a game. Would them lads wear it? Probably not. Yeah. So why expect just because James McLean's playing in England that he should wear that? You know. Totally agree. Yeah. I, for instance, and I'm open about it. I'm going to watch Portsmouth at the weekend. We're playing Luton and it's Luton's remembrance game. There will be a two minute silence and lane reads and everything like that. I personally won't wear a poppy and I won't actually stand there for the two minute silence. I will go back down um Eat a boy. Yeah, go back down, get a drink or something or go to the bathroom. But I will not stand there and observe it. Is there a bathroom? Yeah. A they're in Luton. <laughs> um, Just trying to try and build a light on the situation. <laughs> um, but I will. I won't stand for it. I was the same. If I'm in a media box, I still won't stand and observe it. That's just personally how I feel because I don't feel I should. Yeah. I don't feel I'm in a position to, and I don't care what English people think about that. It doesn't bother him. I don't think McLean cares though either. Do you know what I mean? I, I think he just gets on with it. But he's stated his reasons why, and I, I personally, I stand behind him. Yeah. For that reason, 
But sure, look, it's, 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 it's not me out there playing, but I just don't think he deserves the level of criticism that he gets. I mean, he's, he's came out and stated why. It's not like he doesn't wear it and not give a reason for it yeah. or anything like that. He's clearly said he has nothing against the British whatsoever. Like he doesn't have anything against them. He came out and said it in a statement. You look at statement to Dave Wheel when he's out at Wigan. And, <coughs> um, yeah, just, you know, English people get over it. Like, just yeah. get fucking over it. Oh, exactly. That's all I've got to say about that, man. We move on to uh, Bourne McNeil, uh, Chelsea won. Eden Hazard. Game was shy. Yeah. The game was absolute shy. But again, it's another it's another win for Chelsea. And I think they're going slowly under the radar. Yeah. Getting you know results, results, results. Yeah. And they're not like dominating teams, but they're getting results. <laughs> they're winning games. And and, and and no one's really making a fuss of them because all the other clubs, like the Manchester clubs, are doing so well and winning high scoring games, whereas Chelsea are, are beaten teams and, and yeah. I don't know you can see them that many either yeah like obviously they the 4-2 against Watford uh, yeah, well, a couple of weeks yeah. ago but at the same time that was still a very good performance because they had to come back and they had to show a bit of steel yeah. and they did um, this game it's very easy to go down to Bournemouth and win 1-0 at this stage Bournemouth are a poor team I've said it since before the season started yeah, Bournemouth, yeah, are, yeah. Bournemouth are a really poor side Bournemouth will get relegated because Eddie Howe will stick to his laurels, he'll stick to the players that he has and he knows, and they'll go. They won't go anywhere. They won't go forward past the point because they don't have the players to. At some point, you need to step away from what you believe in slightly to move further up in the table and get success for your team. And Howe won't do that. And I don't know. I don't think Bournemouth will sack him. But at some point they need to really look at themselves and go, right, can we actually afford with the money we're playing players to drop back into the championship for more than a year? Yeah, no, I, I, again, um, I agree with you. I think how after, after this season needs to move on from Bournemouth. I think he's taken them as far as they can go. I think yeah. without him they probably will get relegated too. Um. I don't necessarily think so. I think they could bring another manager in if he was brought in. They won't do this. But if they brought another manager in before January, he got to bring in two or three players that he wanted. They play a different style. I think they'd, I think they'd be just fine then because there's goals in that team. But Eddie Howe is still sticking with Simon Francis, Steve Cook, Charlie Daniels. I know Daniels isn't a bad player. Yeah. But they're not exactly gonna make you a uh, fear going to bomb. Look, Smith, Francis, Cook, Daniels as a back four. Yeah. That sounds like four lads who should be playing non league. And that's not just being out because they're English or whatever. There's good English defenders in the championship and everything like that. Steve Cook's thirty four years old now, spent mm. most of his time outside the Terry. Premier League. Yeah. Like they there needs to be like Ake isn't getting in consistently with them. Yeah, and he should be because yeah. he's the best defender they've got and he showed that when he was there last year well for the first part of half the of the season yeah so got, thank you, man. Yeah. anyway well, let us know your thoughts on, on uh, Bournemouth should Eddie Howe stay go how do you see them staying up Chelsea can they keep uh, mounting points I think they can but uh, we'll move on then to um, Bur- uh, sorry Brighton 1 Southampton 1 yeah. I watched this game and I didn't think Southampton were uh, were Ever looked like they were gonna cause Brighton too much trouble? Yeah, well, I think Duffy and Dunk to start with are a brilliant partnership. They just they get the best out of each other and they make it difficult for every team that comes to play Brighton. Yeah. And um, to the point where does Lewis Dunk have an Irish grandmother? Because that would be perfect. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Um, if you look at the the Southampton's goal though. Ward Prowse was a great free kick and he hit the bar. Yeah. And then Davis, Davis and headed into the ground. It was good hair, like, in, like it was good uh, bit of awareness from us for yeah. the goal. And then again, they just they didn't really do much after that. It was a real typical Southampton performance where they didn't do a lot. And then yeah. you move it then your mate. Yeah. Pascal Gros. Pascal Gross. What the most effective player in the Premier League. Uh, well we talked about him uh, obviously in the, uh, the pre-season summer yeah about him coming in and, and that from England stuff but so how important he'd be for them 
Uh, yeah, and he and he and he's and he's uh, taken to uh, the Premier League like a duck to water. Yeah, as well. And like, I think he might have the most assists of any player in the league so far this season. I think he might have. I think he's on six now, maybe. Yeah. Which I think is. The Bruyne probably rival. I think the Bruyne is close to him. I think they're yeah. neck and neck. But the fact that Kroos is up there with Glenn Murray and Tom Hammond playing. If you have a stat, let us know. Yeah. Uh, Glenn Murray and Tom Hammond are playing up front for Brighton, whereas Jesus and Aguero and Sane and yeah. well, Murray, all these players. Murray, Murray on the score sheet again. Yeah, and just it was another good ball from Gross. Yeah, um, keeper. I'd be asking questions. Yeah, but what's, what's what, when did the downfall of Fraser for us? I said Two years ago. Um, or when Kuma left. I don't think he was ever that good to begin with, to be fair. Nah, he was. I don't think well, he was. Well, he was getting into England squads and stuff like that. And it, uh, mm. It's not that hard in retrospect when you look at the goalkeepers who were getting into the squad then. Mm. You know, that's I don't think he was as, as, as bad, though. Um, he seems to be just getting progressively worse. I always thought he was just a shaky goalkeeper. I thought there was always mistakes in him. He, was, he seems too big for his body. Like, yeah. He seems just... He looks really dumb. Yeah. He looks like real stupid, like... Yeah, let's have a conversation with this. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I think if you can keep Duncan Duffy fit um, and playing well together, and you can keep Grouse fit as well and just giving him the ball, whether it be from free kicks, whether it's just being attacking positions, he's just going to create chances. He shall now he can play against whatever team you put him up against Premier League, he will create chances and he'll score goals as well. Mm. So you've got to. If they can keep feeding him and keep getting his Criado and knock art and stuff around him and them making runs, Brighton will be just fine. Yeah, knock art looks good as well. And Gro- I- look, either way, Grouse is going to outgrow Brighton by the end of the season. They'll yeah. have done. But I'd say there's a few teams in the, in the, in the top end that could use him anyway. Yeah. For, for assists or whatever. Well, yeah. Everett, Everton couldn't because you yeah, already have s- yeah, you're seven or eight. S- yeah. Your whole but, team. Uh, we'll, we'll move on to Everton there. Um, <laughs> Far away. <laughs> Everton. Uh, or Leicester too. Actually, Everton now. Yeah. Actually, I'll just quickly go. Leicester played really well. Puel has started perfectly for Leicester. He put Mares in the hole. Who played a lot better. Vardy had a good game. Gray looked superb. Chilwell on the left hand side looked good as well. Gave Chilwell and Gray, who a lot of Leicester fans have been calling out for all season to get more game time, played both of them. And they were both influential. So, good result for Leicester. Puel will do a good job at Leicester, that's for sure. He's a good manager. It didn't work out perfectly for him at Southampton, but he lost a lot of players there as well. They didn't do too bad. They got a cup final and eight. eight. <laughs> but they didn't play the football that they wanted to. People need to remember how good a manager Claude Puel was before he came to Southampton as well. What he had done with Nice, what he had done with Monaco. You know, he's a very good manager and he'll do well at Leicester, but. We'll move on and pull off far away. I actually I haven't got an awful lot to say. Um, it's, it's I'm coming out and saying the same team or say it's the same thing every week about the team. It's just uh, Owens were tried to 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 change things. He brought Lennon back in, Morales back in to give us width. He had Rooney as number ten. He dropped Sigurds and Klassen and Vlasic both went in the squad, which was a, a little bit shocked by. Uh, Especially Vlasic, if you're going to be playing with two wingers, like yeah, well, he, he, and he's been class so far. He's been one of our best players. Yeah, he's probably been one of the best of the signings that we brought in. Yeah, and he kind of went under the radar because he came in as the last one. But uh, we went to, we went there looking to get a result. And I think the early goal was 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 the killer for us. You know, yeah. Uh, once that went in, you could see you know, there was like oh, it's it's a it's a matter. Look at the back four, and I've been saying it since the start of the season and I did say we need to identify defenders first before yeah. anything we need to show her up at the back before we start fucking scoring goals but we never got left back Michael Keane is average I was about to say Keane has really gone off the boil since you know he left Sean Dyche's tender care he's very average and I think at Burnley I think someone I think Gary Neville came out and said it that if you actually look at it when he was at Burnley he had the protection yeah, that he needed to. to they to were not a lot more defensive, and he probably, as harsh it might be on Jackie Elker or Williams, he probably had a better central defender beside him in Ben Mee. Yeah, yeah Ben Mee, I mean, like yeah, Ben Mee's all that, and all that. I actually think Tarkovsky's a better player. But, yeah, um, Tarkovsky's quality, and we'll get on to Ben Mee in a minute. But. Yeah, but it's just 
you know, and, uh, I don't know, I'm just I'm just so pissed off that I just keep coming and saying the same fucking stuff. You think about I'm, where where like it doesn't look good for him. I was about to say, are you now? I'm worried. I'm genuinely. Are you worried. realistically in a relegation battle? Yeah, yeah. How, how can you not be? So yeah. Look where we are. Look how we we, we can't score goals. The yeah. struggle to score goals is no pace. Nias coming in and <laughs> we were joking about him being the answer and all that, but he's not a good footballer. Yeah. I mean, he can put him in the box and he probably get you a couple of goals. And that's yeah, fair enough, but he's, he probably gets a ten or twelve goals over the course of a season. He can't control just, the ball. The ball just bounces off. He actually has a worse first touch than Lukaku. I didn't yeah. it was possible, <laughs> but he has a worse first first touch than him. And he, he just he can't do it. He's just a pain to watch. I, yeah. I actually, I get not not just him. It's being a bit unfair. Like Calvert Lewin as well. It's unfair to be putting someone of his age. Up there to lead the line. The I think the only reason Calvert Lewin is up there every week and he plays basically every week is not even that there's no one else because obviously you do have any ash, you do have Rooney stuff like that. But Rooney comes deep. I think. But Koeman now Unsworth see that there's a need for a player who can try and stretch the other team. Can it's try. Not that. And he he's put up there to hold the ball and make it stick and he just doesn't do. It. Yeah, but he, he's got pace as well to put balls in behind. It. Maybe Everton aren't playing the ball right to him. Maybe they're doing what they did wrong in games with Lukaku last season as well. Trying to get the ball in feet when realistically it should be down behind. Yeah. But Maybe it's just that's the same issue that's persisting throughout different players, different managers now, that they need to find someone to just go, lads, actually, the ball should go over the top and not into his feet when there's four defenders in front of him. I, I think it's time for an evolution. I mean, you new manager to come in. Talk to Sean Deutsch. I don't know if I really want him, but I can only judge him when he comes in. If he comes in, I, I can that, only you can only judge the manager based on results. So I'm gonna be honest. I don't think Sean Deutsch should be the worst appointment, but at the same time, if he's coming in, he's viewing that as a long term position. When I think it's just gonna be for the year. I don't think it'd just be for the year. I think you'd probably get the season after, but I don't think long term it's the right appointment. I think short term it is. Yeah. Because well, he will make short it term and you want to talk, I can't believe I'm talking about survival. But you you surely be looking at other guys there. You, you yeah. don't take Deutsch away from a settled team and for the Ireland's sake I'd like to see Deutsch stay. Yeah. I think the most I think the man who makes the most sense if you're going short term is Alan Yeah. Because we know I for all big and talking about it. Although the one thing is you're giving Big Sam that much money to pay people off with in different restaurants around London and everything. I, I, it's not my <laughs> money, so I don't give a fuck. Um, I just want to see us win the games again, scoring goals. Well, I think that's what Allardyce would do. I don't think he's a play very good football. Um, we don't play very good football anyway. But the, the issue I'd have, does he have... Allardyce has always been successful with a good striker up there. Not necessarily a big man, but... A, Tends to be most of the time. Um, like with, yeah, Benteke was up there last season for him at Palace and stuff like that, and that that helped them. Um, you probably need to sign a player in January to kind of be that guy. I think you need to sign a striker anyway in January. Um, but the one thing last he, match, but. the one thing you would do is he'd make you defensively solid, and that's the most important thing right now, isn't it? Yeah. We need to stop leaking goals and we need to start scoring goals. But uh, we'll move on anyway to... I haven't got much more to say about that. I really get really pissed off. Uh, Sending Paul off for the day in a bad mood now. Yeah. But, um... The Burnley, Burnley Newcastle. Uh, won Newcastle and Jeff Hendrick. Yeah. Shite game. I'm not even going to oh. talk about it for too long. Good goal. That's it. <laughs> Awful game. Awful game. It's like watching Ireland play Moldova. Like Newcastle are so listless, they're good at the back, and That's Benitez it. has them fight, and they'll win games just based off the fact that Benitez just has them fighting and has them playing um, that type of football. Mm. But they need a striker, they need goals, and they just don't have it. I think they could be in a bit of trouble if they don't find someone to score them a few goals because Benitez will keep them defensively solid, Benitez will keep them in games because he's a brilliant manager. But at some point, someone needs to put the ball in the back of the net. 
and they really are getting that consistently. Absolutely. When you look at the players they have, Hosselu and these players, Gale. Mitrovic, Gale. They're not going to score the goals. I, uh, unless Newcastle, Newcastle are doing all right until recently. Um, they just need to, if they can get some midfielders to get on the score sheet and maybe try and get someone in in January because I know they yeah. didn't get anybody in the summer. I think they'll be all right. They could finish mid-table. Yeah, the one thing with Newcastle that they were missing last night was Mikel Marino was out injured and he is their most important and probably their best player. Yeah. So they were missing him, but you have to give all credit to Burnley as well because they just they just keep winning these games. Yeah. And they will continue to do this on their dice. They will just win games like this. And clean sheet again. It was a good yeah. goal by uh, by Hendrick as well. I mean, he played the ball. Hendrick played well. He could really played, missed though, could he? Hendrick played well again though. He he, he plays well for Burnley. Dice gets the best out of Hendrick, and Hendrick's a good player. Mm. Um, and maybe Ireland don't get really the best out of Hendrick sometimes, but Dice definitely does. Play he play, and he gets pretty good against Brady. He gets pretty good service out of Brady as well. Brady's a very important player for them. Um, and it's good to see because it's nice to see Irish players in the Premier League who are Doing playing well. every week and playing well and are important players for the team. Also, the last point on it is Rob Elliott had a fantastic game again. Yeah. He's a super keeper and him and Randolph after these next couple of games maybe even going into the World Cup if we get there or after that are going to have some battle for that number one shirt because Ali is really the real deal at this stage yeah well, let us know your thoughts <coughs> in the comments below that's been our Premier League show thank you very much for watching if anybody out there would like to come in on the couch and talk football with us let us know we'll also be doing some uh, League of Ireland videos coming up now towards the end of the season after the Cup final so keep your eye out for them thank you very much for watching Irish Football Fan TV